Hello, and welcome to our third installment of our Kentucky 4-H Civic Engagement Series. We are so happy and blessed today to be in our Lieutenant Governor's office interviewing with Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman. We have been so excited for today, and we are so glad that she was able to fit us in her busy schedule. Uh, we have found out that she's actually going to be uh, reading to, to some students later on this morning, and we are just so excited to know that our elected officials are willing to get out in the public and work with our young people in literacy development as well. Today, Emily Murphy will be speaking with Lieutenant Governor Coleman, and we are so excited to hear what they will be discussing. So, Lieutenant Governor Coleman, could you please tell us about yourself, maybe if you're originally from Kentucky, where you grew up? Yes, so I am from Kentucky. I've born and raised here, always lived here. I, I um, actually grew up in a town called Bergen, which most people have not heard of, but it is in Mercer County, Kentucky, and I graduated from Mercer County High School and went on to graduate from Center College in Danville and um, got a master's degree at the University of Louisville. And now I am a, doctor, a doctoral student at the University of Kentucky and I hope to finish my dissertation at some point <laughs> when things maybe lighten up a little bit. Um, but so I've spent my entire life and career right here in Kentucky um, and very fortunate to have so many great people in those small communities that really taught me a lot growing up. Awesome. I'm also from Mercer County as well, so I'm glad to have a fellow Mercer County in here with me today. Uh, so could you please tell us about the three main purposes of the Office of the Lieutenant Governor and what is your role in each? So in the, in the role of Lieutenant Governor, this is a very unique uh, position for several, several reasons. One is that it's the only um, seat that you have to be asked to run for. Uh, any other race, you can decide you want to jump in for governor or senator or, you know, House of Representatives, city council even, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but for this one, you have to be asked by a gubernatorial candidate to join their ticket. And so it's unique in that way. Um, it also, um, in this position, really requires you to be someone who can obviously work well with others, but build relationships um, across uh, the state. Typically what happens is a governor will look for someone that shares their views, because obviously you want to make sure that you agree on, on a lot of issues and are heading in the same direction. But they also want someone who checks boxes that they don't, right? So kind of you fill gaps in that way. So when you think about Governor Bashir, he is uh, from Louisville, which is obviously the largest city in Kentucky. He is an attorney. Um, he, he had his uh, roots in the attorney general's office. Um, all of those sorts of things. And so when he asked me to run with him, um, I think it was because um, I'm a female, I'm a teacher, I'm from rural Kentucky, I'm from one of the smallest towns in the state. And so in that way, we kind of balance each other. And so we're able to, to work together that way. What's really important about this office is um, the, I guess, roles of the lieutenant governor changed in, in recent history um, in that um, essentially the lieutenant governor's role is whatever the governor says it is. And so that's also really unique and it could be a problem. We've seen some administrations where that didn't really jive very well and they had issues. But for ours, it's worked great because the governor and I have such a great working relationship. And so I tell people all the time, he could have said after we won, okay, thanks, I'll see you in four years. And that'd have been it. Um, he could have not asked me to run with him again, right? I mean, all of these things could have happened, but what he did was he actually appointed me as Secretary of Education and Workforce Development. No lieutenant governor has ever held that role before, and it's because of my background as a teacher. And so to have a lieutenant governor also wear the hat of cabinet secretary um, was a lot um, in those first couple years, but it was... I think it was a way for us to fulfill our campaign promises in education. And so it's very flexible. It looks like you want it to look, and it's totally dependent upon the working relationship of the governor and lieutenant governor. Awesome. Thank you. We really enjoy hearing about your unique experiences and the roles that you do serving as lieutenant governor. 
So you've been very active in the support of education at all levels. Could you please explain your thoughts about the future of education here in the Commonwealth? Yes, so education is my, it's my linchpin. It's what I've done my entire life. I've spent, I tell people all the time, I've spent far more time in a classroom and in a school than I have in the Lieutenant Governor's office. And so that is the lens through which I see everything. And I think the future of education um, has great potential in Kentucky. Um, and, it, and, and we need for it to, because I always say the, that the future of Kentucky's economy is in our classrooms today. And that's pre-K through uh, post-secondary. Um, the governor and I both believe that we don't have enough of folks going into the trades, going into the workforce, and going into college. And so our goal is to create every avenue we can to make it accessible, post-secondary life and work and school, accessible to um, our students. But they need to decide what's best for them, right? It's not our job to tell them what they should do. Mm -hmm. It's our job to create opportunity and help them to achieve what they want to achieve. So my point is post-secondary life looks different uh, for different people. College was my choice, and that was the path that I chose. It may not be the choice for everyone. Um, but again, our goal is to make sure that those options are available. So what we did was we, we created one of the, I think, the best accomplishments we've had so far in this administration is we've created the Commonwealth Education Continuum. And the reason that we did that was because what happens so often in education is we lose our students at those transition points. You know, we've got 50% of kids coming into kindergarten, kindergarten ready. So we've got to make sure that we invest in universal pre-K for every four-year-old, and the governor has put that in his budget. So that's a priority for us. Um, whether it's a transition into middle school, into high school, and certainly that transition once our students walk across the stage at graduation. We want to make sure that we uh, have a path for these students. And so we built this continuum with stakeholders from pre-K through college, the workforce, the trades, all of it, and just basically said, how can we come together and not just be in our little silo of, well, I'm only worried about K-12 or I'm only worried about post-secondary um, and really work together to build that continuum. And so really unifying the education community has been something that was important to us and respecting our teachers, respecting the work that they do every day is so important. And um, truly, that's where the opportunity is. Our, our, our kids are the future of our economy. And so we owe it to our education system to invest in it because we're investing in those kids so that we can build the economy of the future. And so it truly is the lens through which I see everything. To me, it's the most important piece of what we do here because everything else hinges on the success of our kids. Awesome. We're so glad to have officials like you who are invested in the future of education in the Commonwealth. Thank so thank you for everything you've done. Uh, what are some of the positions in your office and the responsibilities of those positions? So we have, we have a small but mighty office. Um, and so really we are part of the lieutenant, uh, the, uh, the lieutenant governor's office is the governor's office, right? Like we work hand in hand. It's just that we're in sep we're physically in separate spaces, but we consider ourselves all to be on, on the same team. And so in this physical office, I have a chief of staff and um, her job, and again, these are flexible based on the folks that you hire into these spots, but her expertise is uh, working across agencies with, uh, in, within the executive branch to figure out how to get things moving. And when we recognize an issue, being able to pull the people that we know can help us solve it together, um, really focused on the executive branch. I have a deputy chief of staff and uh, her role is really more legislative. So she works a little bit more on legislation and bill reviews, working with legislators um, and helping the um, legislative liaisons in the cabinets as well um, and does phenomenal work. She has headed up our student mental health work that we've done this year and she's done a great job with it. And we have much more exciting news on that to come. Um, I have a communications director and he is, um, uh, in charge of anything that's related to the media, speech writing, um, social media, all of that kind of stuff, uh, and does a great job with that. And then we've kind of adopted Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie uh, works um, a lot with our agritech 
um, industry and with emerging businesses that are coming to Kentucky. And uh, she does a lot of work with the governor's office and kind of, um, I think, couples that in this office by focusing on education that will help build those jobs and build those industries. And so it's all one big circle. It's really just a matter of trying to make it all fit. And this is, this is how our small but mighty office makes things happen. All right, thank you for sharing the different positions that you have here in your office. Uh, could you share a little bit more about your educational background and what degrees and certifications are needed for your position? Yes, so um, there is, you don't have to have any certain degree or certification to be Lieutenant Governor. You can come from any background, um, and again, it really depends on who the governor has to run with them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but my background is um, I grew up in Bergen. I graduated from Mercer County High School, went on to college, and I played basketball and graduated from Center College. And I almost told you what year, but I'm not going to tell you what year. And um, went from there to the University of Louisville and worked as a graduate assistant on the basketball team um, while getting a master's in political science. And then I became a teacher. And so I used my, my history degree at Center and my teaching certification and coupled it with my political science master's degree and taught government and U.S. history most of, the, most of my career. And then I became an assistant principal. Uh, and that's when the governor asked me to run with him. Sometime in the interim there, I um, started my doctorate. It was about 20, I think it was 2016 when I started. And I actually finished my coursework during the primary campaign. <laughs> so like most people don't, don't know that, but I was, I was actually still doing a lot of classwork uh, to get through those courses. I'm now working on my dissertation and fingers crossed, my goal is to graduate in August. Um, so pending any other worldwide tragedies, <laughs> pandemics that we go through and, and how busy that we get, um, that's my goal. So hopefully I'll be Dr. Lieutenant Governor um, in a few months. <laughs> awesome. I didn't know that you didn't have to have any certain certifications for that. So that's really cool that you shared that with us. Yeah. So one of our 4 -Hers have noticed that the Office of the Lieutenant Governor has been around since 1797. Mm -hmm. Are those roles the same as they were back then or do you see your position changing in the future? So this is a great, this is a great story. Um, it used to be that the Lieutenant Governor um, presided over the Senate. So they would, they would gavel the Senate in, they would basically, you know, run the chamber and things like that. And what happened was, this was a long time ago, when the governor left the state, the lieutenant governor assumes the role of governor in the absence of the governor, right? So when, when, they, leave, when they left the state, the lieutenant governor was known as the governor. Well, we had a lieutenant governor take a little bit of advantage of that. And so when the governor left the state, the lieutenant governor convened the legislature called them into session, changed some laws, and did some things before the governor could get back. <laughs> I know, and some states still have that. If you pay attention, um, there was a state out west where the governor went to the border, and while he was gone, the lieutenant governor just started deploying troops and changing, you know, basically taking over. Um, now we have social media, so the governor found out about it very quickly. Back then, probably not so quickly. So um, after that, the role of the lieutenant governor changed, and so that's why it is essentially what the governor says it is. So this is how I kind of explain it. I've, I was an assistant principal before, and that's a lot like this role, right? Like the principal's running the school, and your job is to assist them in whatever way that they need. You're, you're a team. You're a partners. And so that's kind of like it, how it is here now. So it, it's changed pretty drastically um, from what it used to be. Um, in terms of it changing in the future, um, you know, I'm, I'm on, honestly not certain about that. Um, it would take um, an agreement between the governor and the legislature and the lieutenant governor about changing the, the roles of this office. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they all kind of like it how it is right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't see it changing anytime soon, but I think I could be surprised. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it did either. So. <laughs> Well, it's a very neat story to share with us that really kind of explains how your role is today. What would you like to say to 4-Hers in Kentucky about the importance of civic engagement and service? Oh, I cannot overstate the importance of civic engagement um, and, and getting involved in your community. 
So this is, this, I, I have uh, three steps that I think every young person should take when they're thinking about how to get involved in their community and to become leaders, right? To become civically engaged. The first is to find your passion, right? We all have different interests. Um, mine is education. Uh, the lieutenant governor before me was something else and so forth and so on. And so even our legislators that, that are making decisions about bills that, you know, one may be a doctor and they have no idea what goes on in school, right? Mm -hmm. One may be a, an attorney, but they don't know what it's like to be in healthcare. Mm -hmm. So they have to rely on their subject matter experts, right? So we all need different backgrounds so that we can kind of piece that puzzle together. So first, find your passion. The second is get involved. There are tons of community organizations, whether it's in your school, at your university, within your local community, that um, will fill the need of that passion that you have, whether it's volunteering at the local homeless shelter, volunteering for a charitable organization like a 501c3, um, joining a, a community leadership group. All of those things are there. You just gotta find where you fit. And once you get involved, take the lead. Get your feet wet, learn about everything, build those relationships with, within that organization, but also across organizations. And then when you're ready, step into those leadership roles and don't be afraid to take the reins and, um, and become a leader in something that you care really deeply about. Um, and no, that fits for anybody, no matter what your interests are or what direction you see your life going. If you find your passion and you get involved and you take the lead, there's probably good things ahead for you. Awesome. Thank you for inspiring 4-Hers across the Commonwealth in finding their passion and really changing the community. Are there any questions that you would like to ask about the Kentucky 4-H program? Well, I, I actually have to tell you this. I was a 4-Her um, and back in the day, this was a long time ago, but I actually qualified for the state horse judging competition. Um, I used to show horses um, Western when I was younger, and so I'm, I'm fairly familiar with 4-H. But I think I would say my question for 4-Hers would be, what do you need from your elected leaders? What, what, what is it that, um, that you see as challenges out there in the state, that barriers to your leadership that we may be able to help you with? Um, and I would remind 4 Hers that this is their house. The Capitol belongs to the people of Kentucky. And so anything that we can be of help with, we are happy uh, to do that, especially for future leaders. Awesome, thank you. I definitely think that things like this, you know, interviewing and letting them know, like the education and the background behind your positions are what's needed, especially after COVID. Okay. And next week, we're actually uh, having a group of 4-Hers come up here for a capital experience. Okay. So that'll really open some new doors for some 4-Hers that maybe didn't know about what goes on up here in the Capitol. That is so great. And I believe that is all we have for today. So thank you so much for, you know, inspiring 4-Hers and giving us some educational background about the Office of the Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. I think you might have a future in journalism. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> this is great. We are just so happy that we were able to be here, and we are so pleased that she was able to give of her time and her very busy schedule at this time of the year uh, to, to join us. Thank you, Emily, and thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And I'm going to go away from here with those three important facts. Find your passion, get involved, and take the lead. Thank you again, Lieutenant Governor, and we hope you all get something positive out of this discussion.